Well, President Biden turns 81 today, and he wants you to give him this gift. Two wars, one with Iran and one with Russia. Is that so much to ask? For 81, the guy's done 81 years on this planet. 81 years of warmongering. That's the least you can get a warmonger for his birthday. Right, that's what Another he really war. wants he in wants the world. Wars. Well, I mean, I don't know what this guy wants. He's a vegetable, but this is what his administration wants. The president published an op-ed in the Washington Post today or at least someone representing the administration There's no way published in hell this. this guy wrote this. No one believes he can write an essay. No. Absolutely he can't. Um, but, you know, this is the guy we're supposed to think wrote this essay. I'm going to play you footage of him at the APAC conference last week. I warn you, it's a tiny bit gross. Um, if you're eating something, put it down. I'm, I hate booger humor, but we're going there. Watch. Tech companies like Anthropic, and, and I'm going to mispronounce. You stand there. <laughs> and then pointed to it and then in front of all of these powerful asian leaders and business leaders He's like, look at that who, and then he was like stand there maybe don't stand there guy there's like literally an episode of friends where and it's a oyster he's like i stepped on a giant booger um i can't not put the friends reference in there so of course this guy did not write this op-end um, but op the op-ed, but the people pulling the strings for the Biden administration did. So the point is, let's get to the point of what those people want, because somebody is leading our country into war. Here's the main pitch, says both Putin and Hamas are fighting to wipe a neighboring democracy off the map. And both Putin and Hamas hope to collapse broader regional stability and integration and take advantage of the ensuing disorder. America cannot and will not let that happen. For our own national security interests and for the good of the entire world, it gets really tiring to be the world's hero. Uh, but that's what we do because the United States, he says, is the essential nation. We rally allies and partners to stand up to aggressors and make progress towards a brighter, more peaceful future. The world looks to us to solve the problems of our time. Do they, though? <laughs> Uh, for the, this is the duty of leadership and America will lead for if we walk away from the challenges today, the risk of conflict could spread and the cost to address them will only rise and we will not let that happen. Now, this is the most laughable part. If it didn't refer to human death, it would be laughable, but, but it's not here. He says that in Ukraine, we don't even have to do the dying. Like, look in Ukraine, we're keeping American troops out of the war, he says. We're giving them weapons. We're giving them money. We have NATO. NATO's sending a bunch of shit, right? So that's his pitch for Ukraine. But then let's go down a few more paragraphs to Israel. To Israel, though, yeah, we're going there. So I we ordered two U.S. carrier group, groups to the region to enhance deterrence. So, yeah, let's not let that one slide. In Ukraine, we don't have to die. We can let them die because... Who cares about them? And they've done a great job of that. I mean, let's be honest. Almost, <laughs> Good point. I mean, they really have done a great job. Good job on all the dying Yeah, on, I mean, on your own. Yeah, I mean, Ukraine, literally an entire generation of young men is gone in Ukraine now. Almost every male in Ukraine is gone. So they've done a, NATO has done a really good job killing Ukrainians. Um, but in Israel, the Americans will need to die for Israel. Yeah. That's, yes, you will have to die for Israel. Um, I, he doesn't make a case for why. Like, why are some people more valuable than another? 
why do we not care about Ukrainian lives, but we do care about Israeli lives? I'm, I'm curious why, why there's a hierarchy I, of like, it's like passport, yeah. you know, like you're an A passport or a B passport, maybe because Ukraine is not like a high level visa free travel passport, then we, we can let them die. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I know my 13 year old son, like he's, you know, getting up there in age, he'll soon be of draft age. Mm -hmm. And if called upon, like the United States says, hey, Clayton, do you want your son to go to Israel to die for for whatever, I don't know, whatever oil, uh, you know, whatever resources we're trying to steal today and trying to steal from from Gaza. Like, do you want your son to go and do that? I mean, as a proud American, as a, as a strong American, I will say absolutely my son should go off to fight in Israel. But only for Israelis, not for any brown people, no, no. not for any Eastern European. No, brown people, not come for, on. No. No, no, my son's not going to die for any brown people. Okay. Only Israelis. Okay. Not Got, Ukrainians. Gotcha. Not Ukrainians. Not Eastern Europeans. No, no, no. The, okay. No, the way the United States rolls, we got to, no, we're not doing that this time. Okay. We learned our lesson. We learned our lesson in Iraq. Um, well, we're going to talk about Iran. Uh, can we put that slide back up where he says that two U.S. carrier groups are going to go now to Israel for to enhance deterrence? Okay. Uh, he says, we're going to go after Hamas and those who finance and facilitate its terrorism. By that, make no mistake, he means Iran, because they have been trying to push us into this idea that it's Iran that funds Hamas. Let's leave that for a second. Uh, he says, and also we're going to do multiple rounds of sanctions of mass destruction. The mass destruction part I added, you're welcome, to de degrade Hamas's financial structure and cut it off from outside funding and blocking access to funding channels, including via social media. There's a little censorship in there for you, too. So we got it all right. We're going to send some troops. Uh, we're going to go after Iran and we're going to start censoring social media. I mean, start right is a right. joke. They have been. Uh, so he's sending troops in he says to go after hamas and those who finance and facilitate its terrorists well we've done that the united states has financed hamas uh, but he doesn't admit that in order to avoid saying that the u.s has to go after itself even the wall street journal recently take a look at this uh admitted that the west inadvertently oops <laughs> i didn't it? know i was funding a terrorist group no uh, let me just read the headline to people that are driving and listening to the audio version it's called how the west and israel itself inadvertently funded hamas and yeah it wasn't really inadvertent i mean it was you can pretend that it was inadvertent but it was intentional by using you know different shell companies and the way that you funnel money through mosques and all of that's the same stuff we did in afghanistan it's the same stuff we did in iraq it's the same pattern it's not inadvertent at all. It's highly intentional that you receive tens of millions of dollars and weapons from the United States. Well, he didn't mean us. Okay. He meant Iran. Uh, they've okay. been trying to sell, this, sell us this from day one, from January, uh, I'm sorry, from October 7th, 2023. We were told on that day, this is the work of Iran. We're going to find that out. You just wait. Uh, so by this, he means that Israel and the U.S. are stepping up rhetoric around the war with Iran by saying they funded Hamas. Not us. So by telling us he's okay. going to go after the funders of Hamas, make no mistake, he means Iran. Go oh, ahead, Oh, so David. but not ourselves. Okay. <laughs> well, and I just wanted to point out a quote from 2019 from Netanyahu himself. He said, anyone who wants to thwart the establishment of a Palestinian state has to support bolstering Hamas and transferring money to Hamas. This is part of our strategy. Yeah, yeah it's well known. I mean, any idiot who's been following this story for any length of time knows that Netanyahu Yes, was absolutely in favor of funding Hamas. They funded Hamas. So did the United States. They are an, an invention of the West. Without us, they would not exist. So get that out of your brain. And then now to spin it, it's fully backed by, by Iran. Like that's Right. And in fact, in the 50s, there was an Israeli plan to sort of like push um, Palestinians to I extremism in order to justify their extinction. This was, I, I think it was called Operation Blue something. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll get, get back to you. Um, so did President Biden ask Congress to declare war with Iran? Well, he doesn't have to, because remember just a few weeks ago, we talked about how Congress already passed a bill to give him all the power it needs to rage, wage war with Iran. This is U.S. House of Representatives House Resolution 559. Uh, paves oh yeah, Mike the, McCall, good old warmonger Mike McCall. Right, paves the way for war over nuclear weapons with Iran. The re resolution declares that it is the U.S. policy that a nuclear Islamic Republic of Iran is not acceptable, and it, the bill said that the U.S. can use any means necessary to prevent nuclear war with Iran. 
Uh, so are we quite sure, though, that we want a war with Iran? Yes. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just channel channeling my inner Nikki Haley. Oh, because, okay. <laughs> sorry, it just stand down, Nikki just Haley. Comes out of me sometimes. You get you know? excited over there. When I think about all of the donors who are donating me money and part of my te- presidential campaign, I'm really I want a war with Iran. Okay, Rambo. We'll take a look at this. This is Iran's new hypersonic missile. Do you now want a war with Iran? I mean, you know, they, this was. Uh, what they're calling rare hypersonic glider technology. It was shown off at a conference over the weekend. Um, But this is for aerospace technology, but still we don't know exactly what they're capable of because Congress is busy lying about it and twisting the words of the IAEA. We've gone over that in depth. Uh, So maybe we're scared of that. Maybe we're not. I don't know, right? Uh, I personally don't want a war with Iran just for fun. Um, But clearly voters are not buying this war pitch. Watch MSNBC this weekend freaking out about how low the president's poll numbers are because of the war in Gaza. Overall, this is the handling of the Israel-Hamas war. And again, it kind of measures overall uh, up with Biden's uh, foreign policy approval. But look at this. Among the oldest group of voters, 65 Mm. plus, there's a majority who approve of how Biden is handling this. That's plus 12. Look at the youngest group of voters. 20 approve, 70 percent disapprove. He is 50 points underwater with the youngest group of voters. That is a 62 point net swing between youngest and oldest on this topic of Israel. Look at Hamas. her body language. That's a critical that's group of voters bad. they need in order to win re-election. That's for sure. Yeah. Then they showed later a poll that shows in that same in that same clip on Meet the Press. Then they show the poll later that shows that President Trump is now beating Biden like handsomely. Right. And so her body language is like, oh no, what are we going to do? As if it's like a collective problem that she needs to solve. So there's no preamble of uh, no, you see them laying the gro- in- I have a story coming out soon on this but they're, they're laying the groundwork of course to to pull him out of this so David Axelrod recently of course saying that he's you know not up for it and they need to replace him they need to pull him out of there there's been a number of liberal media outlets calling for his replacement um, and putting in someone else Van Jones has been out there saying this so I think Kamala Harris is probably going to be the replacement here very very soon I would think And uh, so you can see them laying the groundwork here. Because they can't have this. Clearly, they can't have this. But if if it's about the issues of war and not the person, then maybe that's a different story, right? Because could you have this approving of the war if it was a different person? Could you have? No. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. Could you have the approval of the... uh, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. So I'm I'm still getting over this cold. My question is... um, Ooh, that that sounded worse than it was. Believe me. Um, the question was, would 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 uh, approval numbers be different if it was Kamala Harris doing the same thing, waging war in Israel? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, young people seem to be anti-war, uh, which is encouraging. Right. That's what I think. But I don't know the numbers on how they think he's handling Ukraine. And it'd be interesting to see young people and their voting and polling numbers with the president's handling of Ukraine, because. All of the, you know, you certainly had the media push for for Zelensky in Ukraine, right? So you definitely had that big push. Um, And I think young people certainly changed their Twitter bios and had Ukrainian flags and all of that stuff. So it'd be interesting to see the difference between those two wars. Yeah. Excuse me. Well, the Wall Street Journal is helping the president out by saying it's not really his foreign policy. It's just grandpa speak. Like, you know, here's this headline. Biden likes to talk about the old days. Young voters don't like it. It's just because he's an anachronism. You know, like, it, you know, it's just like your old crazy uncle. That doesn't land. It's not because he wants war and so many deaths in Ukraine uh, and Palestinian regions. It's just, you know, that it's old, old thing. Joe. It's yeah. just Joe being Joe. And now the Daily Mail says that you know, this is all happening because he's downright senile. And take a look at this. Now his staff has resorted to what they call Operation Bubble Wrap because he's always confused and falling as often as his poll numbers. They're resorting to keeping him as contained as possible because people are starting to notice. Uh, So clearly this guy doesn't want war with Iraq. He doesn't know what orbit he's in. But the people pulling the strings behind him do want war. That's what we need to 
think about and act upon who are the warmongers behind him. Will it make a difference if they just switch him out for somebody else? If it's the same powers pushing us towards war, ranking people we will and will not die for. Uh, I don't know. And I'll end with this. I think this is a clear indication that Biden is losing the young generation. Um, I don't always like to use like celebrities and singers and, and their politics. But listen to at least this. This is Cardi B, the singer, railing against budget cuts for American cities while funding two wars. She says because of this, she's done with Joe Biden. Now, I want to warn you, there's a lot of F-bombs in here. Uh, so cover your little one's ears if you'd like. But listen to this sort of change in tone of the attitude of people who are influential towards joe biden there's going to be an 120 million dollar budget cut with schools with libraries and the cops and the police department and a five million dollar budget cut in sanitation of a budget cut in sanitation bitch we're going to be drowning with rats we're going to be drowning in fucking rats. So we are going to be having a budget cut on these shits. Mind you, and this is why I said, I'm not, this is why I'm telling y'all, I'm not this year. Don't fucking ask me. I don't give a fuck the resume that they send. I don't give a fuck. I'm not endorsing no fucking presidents no more. Because how is there a hundred million dollar budget cut in New York City for, for, um, fucking schools, library, uh, police safety and sanitation yeah joe biden is talking about like yeah we could fund two wars we could fund two wars motherfuckers talking about we don't got it but we got it like we're the greatest nation no the fuck we're not we're going through some shit right now like say it say it we're really going through uh, we, we, we really 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 are fucked right now really 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 <laughs> I can honestly say I didn't think I would ever agree with a single thing she said. And yeah, I know. I know. When looking. I heard this this morning, I was like, well, I just agree with her. Well, I can't yeah. believe it. We're going to be drowning in rats. Our friend uh, friend of the show, Brandon Straka, of course, who was arrested by the FBI after just appearing on January 6th, he tweeted about this earlier today. He said, you know, Cardi B, he said, good for you for coming to this awareness. He said, it happened to me eight years ago where I had this awakening. Other people are coming to this awakening last year, two years ago. You had your awakening this week. Hey, Good for you. Good for anybody who's waking up and paying attention to what these people are doing to us. Finally, yeah. finally, you know, this community that votes for these people, these Democrats blindly, and they see what's happening to their cities. They open up their cities to illegal immigrants. Yeah. We're a sanctuary city. And then their whole city is collapsing because they can't afford to do anything because and they're taking hotels and turning them into uh, nice, you know, nice places for illegal immigrants to live. Um, this is the crap that they're doing, and hopefully pe more people will wake up. Good for her. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.